everybody, my name is Jodie Flavel, artist and owner of Decorous Vintage Designs and welcome to my channel. I like to show you guys furniture painting tutorials and in this week's tutorial I am going to be showing you how to get a very faded vintage looking folksy Mediterranean look so stay tuned for that. All right guys, so there is a chance that you might recognize this piece. This piece I did a tutorial on a few weeks ago. However, it wasn't there wasn't any interest in this piece at all and I, it wasn't really moving and I wasn't really convinced by the look myself. I'm always telling you guys it's only paint and that's exactly what's happening here is that I am just repainting an old finish that I want to change up. I am using the Scarlet Brush by Dixie Belle, which is a brand new synthetic brush from their range. I also have Pinecone, which is a very brown olive colour, and I am basically just putting on a base layer of this, and I'm going to cover the whole piece in Pinecone to start with. All of the products that I use today will all be listed below, so if you can't keep up, don't worry, you can just reference them below. You can also purchase these products if you're in the US through the links that I put below. It is an affiliate link, however, it doesn't cost you anything extra and it does help me out a little bit. Also, if you enjoy my videos, I do try to put them out on a weekly basis, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel, clicking that bell, which will let you know whenever I post a video, and also like and comment on the video as well, because this also really helps me out as well. Alright, so now that the pine cone has dried, I am coming in with some kernel mustard, which is a very, very strong, deep yellow. I am using my mini brush, um, I'm not using a lot of water simply because uh, the workshop that I'm in is very very cold so the water doesn't soak or dry very quickly but if you're in a warm environment I would suggest misting, however my brush is actually saturated with a little bit of water and I'm dipping into the kernel mustard and as I say just focusing at first just around those edges of the piece. Once I am satisfied with that, I have now got my flat medium brush and I'm using um, Daisy. It doesn't really, really matter what brushes you use here as long as they have a flat surface. Don't use round brushes for this because what I'm going to be doing is a process called cross hatching where basically I load my brush up with one colour and then I just keep brushing back, you know, up and downwards and right and left and, and it almost then turns into a dry brushing method where I am just trying to take off as much paint as I can and what this does is it creates a very, very rustic look. I just want to highlight this panel some more. So again, I'm just coming in with another flat brush and I have Lemonade, which is a very, very pale, pale yellow. And I am brushing this into the middle where I put the daisy. I am then coming back in with my kernel mustard and I am just blending this out a little bit, still using that cross hatching method of up and down movements and left and right movements. And I want the brush strokes there. I want it to look very scratchy, but at the same time, I don't want it to look like there are clunks of color. It's got to look natural. So I'm now bringing some holy guacamole into this, which is a very, very light olive green color. I am using a French tip brush because it's natural bristled and it's going to be very, very textured. And I am putting this around the frame again. So what I am thinking here is um, I want it to be very, very rustic. I want it to look very aged. So I want the holy guacamole to provide a little bit of a vignette in some areas and to make it look like it has aged and worn over time. So whenever I apply some holy guacamole, I am I'm then coming in with my kernel mustard brush again and again just blending it out a little bit i don't want to blend it so much that i totally lose the color but i do want to blend those edges enough that they don't look totally stark and blotchy i just want to soften up those edges a little bit i will also be following the same process for the top of the drawers as well I 
I've now waited for the piece to be totally dry and as you can see um, there are lots of different variations of colour here and that's because I've used three different yellows and a darker colour, holy guacamole and also some pine cone as well which has affected the overall tone of the piece. I now have some barn red and I just have a regular old chip brush, nothing special here because this is going to be very very rustic and those chip brushes are fantastic for creating very very rustic looks. I have sprayed a lot of water on this time and I am focusing the barn red you know, around the indent of the frame there and I'm just building up the colour slowly, I, as you can see here I'm not rushing at all, um, I'm not trying to get a perfect finish here and I am also bringing some of the colour into the outer edge on the pulls and also bringing it into the panel a little bit as well. I'm painting here I'm actually spritzing my water at the same time and I am pulling the barn red downwards and I just want to get a few drips going there as I say I want this to look very rustic and I want it to look like most of my furniture you know I, I often like to do furniture that's very rustic and very watery and you know I like I really like to water down colors and play with them in different ways um, and this one is no exception um, I, it's just it's the first time I've ever done a yellow piece actually believe it or not and I'm just experimenting now um, I do think of red as a big contrasting color to yellow so again if you go back to the color wheel it it, it is a contrasting colour and so that is what I have in my head here is that this red is going to create some really nice contrast and drama. I'm also bringing some of that brown red onto the top of the drawers. I am not going to use as much brown red on the drawers as what I have done on the panels. The reason for this is that I just want it to look very very soft up there. So what I've done instead is I'm just focusing the barn red around the edges, just dry brushing it on a little bit and also I will dry a little bit onto the hardware just to get that contrast and to get that uh, chippy look that I'm going for here. So I've gone back now to the panels, I've added a little bit more barn red again and I am spritzing and I just want to get some more drips. I feel like a lot of the drips actually disappeared so I'm going to get a lot more drips on this piece and then I'm just going to let those drips kind of do their thing and then let it all settle down and then come back to it again when it's dry. Okay, so now I have some brand new decoupage paper by Dixie Bell, which is the whimsical Mediterranean decoupage paper, which I think is going to be very, it's just going to be perfect for this folksy look that I'm going for here. I'm just measuring it up and just trying to figure out where I might, might want to put this on the panel. All right, so I'm actually just going to stick this decoupage paper down with a top coat here, just have it, uh, a go on <laughs> I'm forgetting words again here I just have a chip brush and I'm using the Dixie Belle top coat in flat I'm using flat because I don't want any gloss here I want this to be a very matte look and I'm putting quite a generous amount on there it's I'm not putting it onto the point that it's dripping but I am building up the top coat because I want this to be a very very solid glue so then I have my decoupage paper and what I love about the Dixie Belle top coats is is that they do give a little bit of time um, so that you can manoeuvre the paper around and figure out exactly where you want it to be. This is here right now so that was obviously very wonky and I need to, um, it can be very hard you know because I obviously I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera and at the same try time trying to make this decoupage paper straight so I do apologise if I'm a little in the way here, it is the first time I've used this decoupage paper myself but as you can see I have had a lot of time to kind of work it to get it right and then I'm just coming back in again with my top coat and I'm just going to apply some top coat over the top just to make sure that this is definitely going to be nice and straight stuck down. This decoupage paper is actually extremely easy to use. It's very soft while at the same time being very strong so it can handle the extra bit of top coat if you just want that security. As you can see I have used quite a bit of top coat here and I keep working the brush and the paper is not ripping or molting or do you know it's just staying completely solid and intact which means it's really good paper to use. Also, lots of other decoupage papers that are due to be released 
from in the Dixie Belle range. So if the folksy one may not be your kind of style, I'm sure there will be different styles there to suit your tastes. They will be released on the 17th of this month, March 2021. Okay, so obviously some of you might be thinking here, well, you've not even measured it. Why <laughs> why are you putting it on here when you've not even measured it? And some people do like to measure things such as decoupage before they apply the decoupage paper. I'm the total opposite. I like to get it on there. Um, I'm not very good at measuring, if I'm totally honest. I always seem to mess it up some way. So I have decided to get my decoupage paper on there. And while it is wet, I'm going in with an 80 grit piece of sandpaper and I am very softly going around those edges. I like to do this while the paper is still damp because it tears much easier. It's not brittle at this point. You know, the top coat hasn't dried it out or anything. Um, it's just still very, very soft and malleable. And so I'm just, as I say, very, very softly going around those edges with my sandpaper. And then I just find that it, can, it pulls off really, really easily that way. And I get the perfect fit. Right, so now I'm using a silkscreen stencil and this is the mosaic stencil by Dixie Belle. So I have some antebellum blue and I'm basically using this pattern and putting it on all four corners. It would have been a good idea actually to, um, it would have definitely been a good idea to chop this up first beforehand. I don't know why I didn't do that, it's just a bit daft of me really. But yes, so I am basically, I just have an artist brush and some antebellum blue and I am putting this in all four corners of each door. The silk screen stencils are fantastic because you can apply them, they just stick down, there's no need to mess around with masking tape and things, and then it's almost like a nylon kind of mesh uh, where the um, gaps are for the actual stencil itself, and it's impossible to get bleed through with these because it doesn't move around and because you don't have to worry about you know putting excess paint or anything like that on, um, it's just all you have to do, it's super easy, is that you just stick it down and and then you do your painting and and then easy as that it's done <laughs> so what's brilliant about them as well is that you actually get 10 uses out of them so you can actually um clean clean the stencil after each use and i haven't tried this out so much yet i, ha I do use this one quite a lot for this piece but i haven't washed the stencil 10 times yet and we used it, but Dixie Belle have advised this is how many times you can actually use the stencil. So you can wash, the, wash it between uses and use it again. Okay, so continuing on with the mosaic stencil, there is another wedge pattern on there that I absolutely love and I'm putting this down um, on the middle bottom of each door using the antebellum blue again. So when I had this piece in mind, it was a very old Mediter Mediterranean folksy piece. It was an antique that I found on Pinterest and it was just very, very over the top and fancy and so that's how I decided to do this piece. Using a random stencil that I got off Amazon, um, it's just a vine stencil and what I decided to do was, um, I was going to hand paint them actually and then I thought hang on I've got lots of stencils here, let's, let's just use a stencil. <laughs> um, so I picked up some evergreen and then I was dabbing some barn red into the evergreen as well just to get that variation of colour. Again I'm wanting it to look like the colours have been blurred and layered over time and then it's starting to rub and peel off just to get that rustic look. I use the vines on the stencil all around um, the middle parts, you know, so, so to fill in the gaps between the uh, mosaic stencil that I used with the antebellum blue. And as I say, this is going to be quite over the top, not over the top in, over the top in a bad way such, but in a very, it's going to be quite fussy, I should say, actually. Um, and it is just because when I did look at the old uh, pieces of furniture on Pinterest, you know, the antiques with the folk art, there was a lot going on there, guys. And, you know, and that is, 
So I'm just trying to recreate that look now, that antique look, that very fussy Mediterranean folk cart look that I have seen on Pinterest. So I just want to make sure that I've got plenty of of bold color, color on here and plenty of detail and also I want it to look like some of that color has started to fade. I've actually now cut up the mosaic stencil here. Woo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, I've actually, I've yeah, I've cut it. And I am just using this on all four corners of the drawers now. So um, again, just using my antebellum blue, I just felt like the drawers really needed something and they were just looking a little bit bare, but at the same time, I didn't want to detract away from the main doors, which is the main event. So I just decided to do a little bit of the mosaic stenciling on the doors, drawers here instead. So now I've finished all my stenciling and this piece is completely dry. I have come in with some 320 grit sandpaper and I am just going to sand some of this down a little bit. So what I want is I just want the colours are looking very, very cartoonish to me. They're looking too bold. They're looking too much like they've just been painted, which of course they have just been painted. So um, I've come in with some sandpaper now just to rough it up a little bit and to make those colours look a lot more faded, look a lot older and more in synergy with the overall piece. As I go along, I'm also distressing this piece in some areas, so um, I'm sanding it down to the wood on some of the edges and corners, again, just to get that very rustic look. All right, so now that it's totally dry, it's time to actually wax and seal this piece. So I'm coming in here with the Le Petit brush by Dixie Bell, which is a natural and synthetic mixed brush, and I'm using the Best Dang Wax in Clear. So this brush is fantastic for this kind of clear wax because it has a large surface area and it just means I can get a lot of paint on there all in one go. But then I am coming in with some Best Dang Wax in black and I am using the French tip brush for this. The reason I am using a smaller brush for the darker wax is because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control, um, especially as I am just trying to very softly darken a few areas up and not the whole piece. So the reason why it's good to put clear wax on first before you go in with any decorative waxes is because the clear wax then acts as a base. So then when you come in with your darker wax, for example, and you decide that you don't like it, you can then just come in with some clear wax and brush the clear wax over the top and it will act as an eraser, or, you know, or alternatively, it will just soften up the darker wax a little bit. So. I use, always use Gator Hide for the top of my piece to make sure it's totally sealed, but I love clear wax as a sealer because it dries and then hardens and then it really does protect the piece while leaving a matte finish. And here's the finished look. I really enjoyed working on this piece and I really feel like this is something that could have been plucked out of an old town in Italy somewhere. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know and also let me know if you've tried a look like this before or if you, if you are wanting to try a look like this. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching. Bye bye.